Now, um, what I've been describing to you so far is something that happens only in prokaryotic cells. Uh, the DNA polymerase process, or the DNA replication process in eukaryotic cells has the same basic ideas. There's a replication fork, there's a DNA polymerase, there are helicases that unwind strands, and so we see the same basic ideas, um, although we do have different names for a lot of the different um, uh, enzymes and proteins involved. But there's one additional consideration in the replication of DNA in eukaryotic cells that we've got to take into account, and that's the fact that eukaryotic cells have DNAs in the form of chromosomes that are linear. So we can see a linear chromosome uh, of a eukaryotic cell uh, shown over here on my left. All right, And that um, property turns out to be a very big consideration. Well, what's the difference then? Um, the difference is that in prokaryotic cells, the DNAs are circular. So we can imagine, for example, if I have um, a circular DNA uh, that looks like this, and I'm only going to show uh, one strand at the moment. Uh, let's imagine that I had a leading strand that got synthesized. What happens with a circular DNA is when that leading strand gets all the way around, it comes back to where it started, and when it comes back to where it started, that primer that was on the end can get removed. DNA polymerase one can come in, fill in the gap, DNA ligase can do it, and every, everybody is uh, fine as far as that is concerned. So that isn't really um, a factor for, um, there, isn't, there aren't any big considerations for a prokaryotic cell, how that happens. In a eukaryotic cell, however, there are other considerations, and they relate to the fact that, first of all, an RNA primer is needed, and second of all, that replication can only occur in the five prime to three prime direction. They're kind of like the considerations we had for lagging strand synthesis. Well, that's actually shown in this slide uh, up over here. So what we see depicted in the slide is, first of all, that we have a um, linear chromosome. And we see uh, the initiation of replication uh, that occurs. And the initiation of replication occurs when, when DNA uh, prime, when, I'm sorry, when the primase enzyme makes an RNA primer. That's going to happen at the five prime end of a brand new strand, which will, of course, be at the three prime end of the complementary strand where the replication uh, is occurring. So we can see that happening right here. We can see the newly synthesized strand. We can see that it has a short little RNA primer at the end. And we see leading strand replication proceeding downwards from left to right. We see lagging strand synthesis, just like we saw in prokaryotic cells, occurring from right to left, going this way. And that occurs uh, in pieces. We see replication completing itself all the way out here, so that when we are done, we started with two strands up here, and we end up with four strands uh, down here. <coughs> so what's um, the deal? Well, the deal is that if you remember, we had to put an RNA primer at the five prime end over here. If we look at the complementary strand, the uh, complementary strand, of course, has a, 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 a five prime RNA primer uh, way down over here. Well, so if we remove that primer, then how do we fill in the gap? Because we well, say, well, use DNA polymerase. Well, we can't use DNA polymerase because DNA polymerase requires a primer to start. We've just taken the primer out. Well, can we put a new one in? Well, we could put a new one in, but it would still be RNA. So what that means then is when cells try to replicate a linear chromosome using the system that I've described to you before, there are sequences at the five prime end of each strand that will have an RNA primer that when it gets removed is lost. So now if we have this lost uh, piece that's there, when that new strand gets resynthesized, okay, gets copied in the next round of replication, that sequence that was at the end is going to be missing. Okay? So each round of replication is going to result then in a shortening of the DNA compared to the round of replication before it. That means that the ends of the linear eukaryotic DNA chromosomes shorten with each round of replication. It's a very important consideration. Now, um, there are implications for that. There are all kinds of thoughts about how that might relate to aging and lifespan and so forth, which really isn't what I'm going to talk about here. But what I do want to talk about here is, first of all, to make you aware of that loss and why that loss occurs, but then also to show you how it is that the cell ultimately, 
overcomes that. Okay? And it ultimately overcomes it by virtue of the fact that cells have an enzyme called telomerase that can restore those ends. Well, in most cells, telomerase, uh, which makes those ends, uh, is not active. But before I talk about telomerase, I've got to say a little bit about what those ends are. Well, if I lose ends of DNA, we could imagine there's going to be some consequences for cells. Because remember, DNA is the genetic material. Genetic, uh, the DNA contains the genes that are necessary for a cell to function. And if every time I replicate, I lose a piece of DNA, I'm going to be losing some genes, ultimately, that the cell needs to live. Isn't that going to be problematic? And the answer is that if there weren't some protective system in place, that would be very problematic. Cells wouldn't last very long. Well, eukaryotic cells have evolved a structure on the ends of linear DNAs called telomeres. And telomeres are very simple things. They are sequences, typically about 8 to 10 nucleotides long, that are repeated hundreds or thousands of times at the end. So that sequence doesn't contain any genes. It's just a sequence that goes over and over and over and over and over. Its function is to be what I like to think of as a fuse on a bomb. Okay? So you light a fuse on a bomb, the, few, the longer the fuse is, the more time you have to run away before the bomb blows up. So you have a firecracker, the kids playing with fireworks over uh, Independence Day can uh, understand this. A longer fuse gives you more time, a shorter fuse gives you less time. So a telomere is a fuse. That fuse is burning down. Every time the cell divides, that fuse gets shorter and shorter. And by the time you run out of fuse and you start deleting genes that are essential for the cell, the bomb goes off, the cell dies, okay? And consequently, um, there's problems that happen there. But that fuse is to give you time to run away. It's giving the cell time to replicate, 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 replicate without any consequences. That's the function, um, or one of the functions of a telomere. Well, that turns out to be useful. So then the question is, how does a telomere get made? And that's the function of the enzyme that I mentioned called telomerase. So let's take a, a moment and see then how telomerase puts on the ends of uh, that repeated sequence on a linear chromosome. So telomerase is an enzyme, and as I mentioned in class, this is an enzyme that isn't present in all cells. So my skin cells that are here, for example, uh, don't have active telomerase. We find telomerase active in fertilized eggs. So telomeres, for example, get put onto that repeated sequence, gets put onto the ends of linear chromosomes back when we were fertilized eggs. It's also present in some stem cells, so that stem cells can regenerate telomeres. And unfortunately, it's also present in cancer cells. So cancer cells have uh, an active telomerase uh, within them that allows them to make that telomere as long as they need, which is why uh, cancer cells are what we call immortal. They can go forever. They, don't, they always replace their fuse, so they don't have to worry about the bomb uh, going off. Well, we're not going to talk about those individual cells here. What I want to spend some time talking about is telomerase and how it functions. So what we see depicted here is the, end, the linear end um, of a uh, eukaryotic chromosome. And we can see that it's got that gap, okay? So if we look at the bottom strand, the bottom strand goes from 5' prime to 3' prime from right to left. The top strand is going from 5' prime to 3' prime from left to right. And we can see that there's an overhang at the 3' prime end arising from the fact that that linear piece got lost during a round of replication. So telomerase recognizes that three prime end that's overhanging from the linear uh, strand as we can see here. And telomerase has a couple of really interesting and cool properties. First of all, it's a DNA polymerase. So DNA polymerases need a primer, and the primer of course is that three prime end that's hanging off there. But DNA polymerases also need a template. They need something to copy. Well, if you look at this DNA strand up here, there's no template. There's nothing to copy. Well, it turns out that telomerase is well equipped for that because telomerase carries its own template. It carries a short stretch of nucleic acid that contains about 8 to 10 nucleotides that it copies over and over and over and over and over. So each time it copies it, it's putting another 8 to 10 base pair copy on the end. So that's how, in fact, that the telomere gets made. 
many, many copies. It keeps copying its own template over and over and over. And you can see that copying going on here. So we can see that this end up here at the top has gotten lengthened because the telomerase has been copying its own template. So I said one thing interesting about the telomerase is that it carries its own template. The other thing that's interesting about telomerase is that the template that it carries is not a strand of DNA. It's actually a short stretch of RNA. Now that RNA is not functioning as a primer. Remember the, the, the primer is up here. What the RNA is doing is it's being copied by the telomerase, which means that the telomerase is a DNA polymerase that's using an RNA template to copy. Okay, I mentioned earlier, most DNA polymerases don't do that, but telomerase uses RNA as a template. It's unusual, and by copying RNA and making DNA from it, this enzyme is functioning as something I described in class as a reverse transcriptase. So a reverse transcriptase is a DNA polymerase that copies RNA and makes DNA. And so that's what telomerase uh, is actually doing here. Well, telomerase moves along. It can make, it can extend this three prime end of this top strand over and over and over many, many times, many hundreds or thousands of times so that we have a long fuse. But remember, we've only made one strand. We've only made that top strand. How does the bottom strand get made? Well, the bottom strand gets made in a traditional way. The traditional way is that primase comes in, it says, oh look, there's a strand, a single strand of uh, DNA that I can copy. It makes a little short stretch of RNA and then DNA polymerase one or three comes in and fills in that gap. And so as a consequence, what we started with up here is a shortened linear chromosome gets lengthened considerably by action of telomerase and these DNA replication enzymes that fill in the bottom strand.